Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about one of the most common defense evasion techniques used by modern day malware, and that is packing. Packing allows malware to keep the majority of its malicious functions obfuscated until runtime, which affects, effectively allows it to defeat antivirus engines that perform static file scanning. As the malware unpacks itself, it needs to inject the malicious code somewhere in order to execute. There are a variety of ways to do this, but the most common are DLL injection, PE injection, and process hollowing. DLL injection is accomplished by writing a path to a malicious DLL in the memory of another process. The remote process will then create a remote thread and execute the DLL. The malware begins by locating the process for the injection this is typically typically done by calling create tool help 32 snapshot process 32 first and process 32 next to get a list of running processes and iterate through them to find the desired target. Once that process is identified, the malware uses the virtual alloc API to allocate memory in the target process, write process memory to write the path of the DLL in the allocated memory and create remote thread to call and execute the DLL at the specified path. The second common technique, PE injection, is very similar to DLL injection in that it involves allocating memory, writing to that allocated memory, and creating a remote thread to execute that memory section. However, instead of writing a path to a DLL that is located on disk, the malware in this case would write the malicious code directly to that memory section. And PE injection is also differs because it does not rely on writing files to disk um, like with DLL inject injection. The third common technique is process hollowing. Um, process hollowing differs from both of the two previous techniques in that rather than allocating additional, additional memory to a target process, the technique unmaps, also known as hollowing out the existing code within a given memory section of that process and overwrites it with malicious code. The technique is often accomplished by calling create process to create a new process in a suspended state, um, which is done by setting um, a specific flag and hollowing out the contents of that process using either ZW unmap view of section or NT unmap view of section. After the memory in that process is hollowed out, the malware will then call virtual alloc to allocate the memory. Again, write process memory to write the malicious code to that allocate memory. Set thread context to modify the entry point to point to the malicious code section and then resume thread to resume execution of that process and therefore the malicious code. Check out the blog post that is linked on the GitHub page for um, additional technical details involving these three processes and several others as well. Now that we have an understanding of some of the most common injection techniques. Let's jump in and see what this looks like in practice. Here I have an analysis virtual machine and I've downloaded TrickBot, which is a popular banking Trojan used for a variety of criminal operations um, ranging from bank fraud to ransomware deployment. The first thing I want to do is open IDA, um, which is a common uh, disassembler often used by uh, malware analysts and reverse engineers. We'll go ahead and navigate to where we have the TrickBot executable located. This is going to ask us if we have um, the uh, PDB file that was previously associated with this executable. 
Um, because we do not have um, access to that, we're just going to go ahead and hit no. All right, it'll take a couple seconds to um, finish the disassembly of the file. One thing I do want to point out is this bar up here um, shows the, the breakdown of the executable. Um, and as we can see here, the, the blue um, represents regular functions um, and the light blue represents library functions. This essentially means um, the amount of the code that's actually uh, readable um, to, to the system. Um, and we can see we have this very large section um, that's this kind of beige color um, that says unexplored. This is a very good indicator for um, letting us know that we're dealing with a packed file because the majority of the data uh, within the file is obfuscated in some way that it cannot uh, currently be read. So this big chunk here is actually going to be the packed code that we're going to be um, dumping out here. The thing I like to do is I like to um, go into the imports um, and get an idea of which API calls the sample is referencing. Now, this doesn't always work because in many cases, especially with malware, um, the authors will perform some kind of um, dynamic uh, API um, resolution that happens at runtime, and therefore we may not be seeing all of the calls um, referenced. But uh, we see a handful of ca calls, and as a matter of fact, if we sort them by alphabetical order, um, we can see that several there are several calls that are associated with the process hollowing injection technique. At the top here, we can see create process A. We can see our um, resume thread as well, and uh, get uh, thread context, uh, which can also be associated with process hollowing. So if we go ahead and um, double click create process A, we can actually follow this and jump into the disassembled function here. And if we scroll down, we uh, see something interesting right away. Reference to reference um, virtual alloc EX and uh, write process memory, which are API calls that are needed to perform process hollowing, but weren't shown in the uh, static imports section. Um, so what's happening here is that the malware is actually dynamically importing and loading these API calls. Um, and the reason that they're doing that is to attempt to avoid antivirus engines that are looking for these calls in order as you see them here. And then if we scroll down to the bottom of the function, um, we can see where it calls resume thread at the end after the malicious code has been written to the hollowed out process. Um, the resume thread call is, uh, is, is called to actually execute uh, resume and uh, resume that process and actually execute the malicious code. Now we can see this in action by um, loading up uh, x32 debug. And I'll also pull up uh, process hacker here so that we can see the, uh, the, the process activity as we go to um, actually debug this sample. So after we load the sample up, uh, we know that the sample is calling create process A. So we will go ahead and search for that and hit F2, um, highlighting this red, indicating that uh, uh, we have a breakpoint set there. And then we will go over to write process memory, set a breakpoint there as well. And finally, 
we'll set a breakpoint on resume thread as well. Now, if we go ahead and give it a run, it's going to uh, hit a breakpoint at the entry point of the executable, um, which is set by default by x32 debug. And if we hit continue, we see that we hit um, create process A. So the, um, the process is being created. And if we hit continue again, um, we hit our write process memory. And if we look over at our process hacker window, we can see um, the process uh, highlighted in gray here. That's, that's the process that it just uh, created using that API call. And uh, we can see that it's currently in a suspended state um, pending actually writing the malicious code uh, to that process. Now, if we jump down here to this argument, uh, we can click follow D word in dump. And what we see here, um, this MZ is a giveaway that what we're looking at in this memory section is an executable. Um, as what we can see here is the standard PE header and uh, uh, PE stub that's associated with Windows executables. We can simply right click the section and hit follow and memory map. And then we can take this and go ahead and select dump memory to file. And we'll just save that to the desktop. And now if we go to this file and open it up in a hex editor, You can see that what we have here is the um, dumped executable. So this is the code that was uh, previously packed um, and was, uh, was, was dumped out during the unpacking process. Now, as you can see, there's, uh, there's some junk at the top of this and there's likely some junk code at the bottom as well. Um, typically when you dump these things out, they require some cleaning up um, but this is a surefire way to effectively dump out executables as they are being unpacked using IDA and x64 debug or x32 debug, depending on if the sample is 32 bits or 64 bits. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.